Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Um, I guess some people might have already ploughed through, you know, the first half of, of this final season, but what in general can people expect, but I guess in particular from, from the second part? So I think the first part was very much focused on Diana and the second part, I think, returns to a focus on the Queen and particularly um, with a sort of increasingly reflective mood. Um, my contribution is mainly in the episode six, which is sort of Blair as arch modernizer, um, uh, invited actually by the Queen to give a kind of critique of the institution of the monarchy. And um, also to some extent in a microcosm of the, the journey of Blair from hyper popularity um, towards the, it's, it's just a snapshot of the arc that any politician goes on from cradle to grave, as it were, so political cradle to grave. So you see him at absolutely the height of his popularity. Episode begins with the Queen dreaming that uh, of the coronation of King Tony um, uh, and ends with a speech that he made at the Women's Institute, which did not go well for him. And so you get a little microcosm. And in the middle, you get Blair making, um, you know, of course, one thinks about the legacy of Mr. Blair's time in office. One of the thing, things a lot of people will think of is Iraq. In fact, I, I probably, like everyone else, assumed that the series would focus in on that particular set of policy decisions. And we perhaps forget other foreign policy interventions like Kosovo. So it uses that a focus on those uh, heroic moments and uh, to show Blair in his pomp, I suppose. But then you start to see, uh, you get to see the pressure of the public gaze. So there's a few different things going on there. It's like Blair as modernizer versus the Queen as um, a traditionalist, um, but also a little kind of, yeah, a window on Blair's own store sort of arc through government and it's clever it's very clever and i think that's what uh, you know the show does very well is um you've got a lot of ground to cover and there's only so many bases that you can kind of stop off at and i think it's really good at what it chooses to show in terms of which events it chooses to focus on as kind of emblems of or little amulets to focus on so you can't tell the whole story, but you're just telling little bits, a little kind of mosaic. And then people might go, oh, yeah, oh, I didn't know that happened. Or did that happen? Let's go and find out. You know, it's sort of invitation, I think, to people to go, yeah, let's let's think about that. It's great. I guess you were sort of uniquely positioned in the sense that you had already been in uh, the, the crown before. Yeah. Um, but you're also no stranger to kind of playing these sort of political figures. Um, but taking on Tony Blair, you know, what were some of the first things that ran through your head? Where did you start from? Were you, how much kind of research were you doing? Did you already have just a really strong idea in your head of who he was and how to play him? I did have a pretty strong idea of who, who I thought he was and not sure I knew how to play him. Yeah, I love, um, so, you know, what, simply put, your job is to, um, well, one's fear as an actor is that no one will believe you. <laughs> which is crazy, really, because everyone knows you're not who you say you are. So they, they must want to believe you on some level. And you've just got to give them a reason, not give them a reason not to, you know? But it's really fun then working out how much to do or not do, particularly when you're talking about somebody people do have a strong idea of, you know, in other words, they can compare you to the real thing. And so I love getting, you know, the dressing up box out and deciding with the hair and makeup designer and costume designer and so on, how, how far do we move towards trying to look more like Blair? My, you know, my head is a different shape. My, my, my face, you know, I, I, I am not Tony Blair. So, um, but as you say, I've done quite a few of those parts. And the key, I think, is in figuring out, for me, I sort of want to know, well, where does the eye go? When I look at me and then look at Blair, look at myself in the mirror, what do I want more of or less of? And you just sort of shave away at it. Anybody who sketches will know that unless you're very gifted and you can do a kind of one line drawing and then it's done, you, you, draw, you draw a thing and then you kind of 
shave away, you rub a, a bit away and you, you colour a bit in and it builds up in layers and eventually, I mean, you usually go too far, but eventually you go, oh, that's about right. It's that process writ large and lots of research, which you then have to chuck away. Lots of looking at video and, you know, in this series we shot a lot of kind of verbatim sequences where I was able to look at the real footage and copy it, you know, beat for beat, word for word, pause for pause. But the job is really then to go, well, I then have to make that feel alive, not just like I'm exactly copying. The... And that's an imaginative job. And it, I can't really describe to you how one does that. You just use your imagination and then it's trial and error, really. Eventually you get to a place of ease and you feel like, yeah, I kind of, I believe in it. And if you believe in it, then you've got half a hope that someone else might. And then they switch the lights on and they make the cameras roll and then they edit it all within an inch of its life. So, you know, if they don't believe you by the end of that, if they don't believe you, you probably get cut. So. <laughs> Um, and of course, you know, it feels like with every new season of The Crown, oh, well, these are some of the most important events that, events that are being portrayed, but particularly perhaps, you know, with this final season, you know, not least the death of Diana. And then, of course, while in the shooting of it and the passing of the Queen, what is it meant to you, I guess, to be part of the legacy of this crown, of, the, of, this, of this show? Um, and what do you think it means to people? What can people take away? Well, I don't know what it means to people. They can tell me that, but I think it's been an extraordinary um thing to be part of uh, particularly because you know the queen died as we were shooting that felt extremely moment i mean it was an, an enormous moment wasn't it in our national life there aren't many things that do that christmas is one of them i always think every year at christmas i think regardless of your religion or lack of it it's a moment when the whole country does more or less the same thing at the same time. I felt that about the Queen's passing. You know, you felt that regardless of your view of the monarchy, everybody was engaged in this incredible act of kind of public mourning. And that's really moving. And to be working on a show about the life of the Queen while that's happening was really kind of um, special, I suppose. And... Um, uh, um, I do think that the show is, you know, it occupies a space in the public conversation about our relationship to nationhood and our relationship to monarchy and the stories we tell ourselves or the the, the dream and the kind of the chocolate box side of the, you know, the, the export of the monarchy. You know, the show's a great export, isn't it? The monarchy's a great export. But then also asking some deeper questions and some perhaps more political questions about that. And it's it's been... It's been a great thing to be part of. Well, I'm out of time, unfortunately, but thank you so much for sharing all that with me. I can't You're wait welcome. for everyone else to watch this final season of The Crown. Thanks a Thanks. lot. Thanks. Thanks.